connecting living Native American tribes to specific archaeological cultures and sites is usually impossible or mere guesswork. However, special examples exist in which archaeologists can make ties between known tribes and the archaeological materials of their ancestors. Because of a continual, well-defined sequence of highly decorated pottery styles, archaeologists can trace back the origins of the Caddo Nation to around 8800 to 900. One of the many arrowhead styles used by the Caddo were haze points, which is what I'm replicating here. Haze points are small arrow points that are created by napping a bipointed preform at the shoulder, creating a diamond-shaped base. In general, points of this style are examples of good workmanship. These generally fall into a 25 to 50 millimeter size range. The shoulders of these points tend to be fairly prominent and extend perpendicular to the long axis of the point. Recurved edges are standard for the style and are usually straight although some serrated examples are known. Flake blanks were the most common blank for starting one of these points, although they may have been bifacially thinned from thicker spalls and chunks as necessary. A variety of air point styles were made by Caddoan peoples and fell out of use as new styles developed. Other than haze points, styles made include Alba, Abbey, Katahala, Trilly, Steiner, and more. Caddoan peoples also made large bifaces called Gahagan bifaces, which would have served as hafted knives. Unmodified flakes would have been the most commonly utilized cutting tools, the advantage of being that they were very easy to produce and expedient. Alabates is the name of the material that I'm napping my haze point from. Alabates is a famous shirt from the Texas Panhandle, which is a little outside of the range of Kiddo and people. This material and the quarry it comes from are so distinct that it is now a national monument. Collection is prohibited at the national monument, which means that this material is now pretty rare. Caddo people would have used a variety of lithic materials. An overall trend in North American prehistory is that over time, people use more local stone sources and less extra-local stone sources. 
This was due to decreased mobility as people lived in more permanent settlements and increased territoriality and conflict as the landscape grew more populated. In western Louisiana, citronelle gravel chert and petrified wood were the most widely utilized resources. In Arkansas, novaculite was one of the most commonly used material types, though other materials such as pitkin chert were also available to use. Texas is host to a variety of chert types, many of which are well known to modern flint knappers. There are many more materials that Caddo people used, whatever was closest to them to provide good materials for their tools. Prehistoric Caddo people lived in East Texas, Western Louisiana, Western Arkansas, the southwest corner of Missouri, and Eastern Oklahoma. The Caddo were historically identified as a group by their shared language. Multiple confederacies or tribes made up the larger Caddo people. The people of the Caddo Nation remain to this day like many other Native American groups. Those earliest discernible Caddo people lived in the late prehistoric period which is the last division of time before the contact period. Caddoan sites are distinct from preceding woodland sites by the variation of pottery styles, more permanent structures and burials, discreet middens, agriculture including maize, evidence of celts, decreasing reliance on stone tools, the use of more local lithic materials, more evidence of status, and evidence of dual ceramic traditions with fine and utility vessels with distinct contrasting designs, rim and body styles. The earliest origins of the Caddo, the dates of 800 to 900 AD, come from the George C. Davis site. Located in central east Texas, this site consists of three earthen mounds, one borrow pit, and a village area that covers around 20 hectares. While the Caddo in presence is what's most obvious at the site, it is a multi-component site with artifacts from going much further back in prehistory.
Agriculture was the largest source of food for the Caddoan people. However, the three biggest cultigens, maize, squash, and beans, were not introduced at the same time. Squash was introduced to the region around calibrated 2,000 to 2,500 years before present. Maize was introduced from Central America around calibrated 1150 BP. Beans were introduced most recently around calibrated 650 to 700 years before present. Other, less important cultigens that the Caddo grew included bottle gourd, sumpweed, sunflower, kinopodium, knotweed, amaranth, maygrass, and little barley. Agriculture was crucial to the diets of these people, although to what degree vary. The geographic extent of Caddo people is so large that multiple environmental zones are included in this area, some of which are better suited to growing crops than others. The fullest elaboration of maize agriculture by the Caddo took place in the Gulf Coastal Plain, especially in the Red River Valley and Wachita River Valley. It was here that there was an abundance of good soils for crops. Pottery is extremely common at Caddo sites, and luckily for archaeologists, this is what allowed them to trace the historic Caddo back hundreds of years in the archaeological record. Styles of ceramic decoration could be found at known historic Caddo sites that match those at prehistoric sites. These would be found in association with older styles of ceramics, which could then be traced back further using the same process. This sequencing of styles is what allowed archaeologists to trace back the Caddo development so far. Sand, grog, and bone grog were all used as tempering agents for Caddo ceramics. There are many, many styles of Caddo pottery, some of which include holly fine engraved, crockett curvilinear incised, Washington square paneled, wool mag engraved, and a host of others. Ceramics were one of the most important tools for the Caddo people. Crops like maize are nearly impossible to eat without cooking first. Therefore, pottery allowed a way for them to exploit food resources, which then became the majority of their diet.